Um, for our last speaker, I will call on our dinner speaker of last night, the former president of Mongolia, Mr. Enk Bayar. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will try to first uh, uh, draw together with you the present picture of uh, global governance. Everybody tried to define what does it mean, uh, the global governance. I think it's uh, ever changing uh, complex institutions and mechanisms uh, functioning to solve out the global problems facing the humanity today and in future. We have to ask why ever changing. I think uh, the problems themselves are changing uh, constantly. So the right global governance mechanism should be able to be flexible enough to adapt itself to the changing problems of the humanity. Why complex? Because uh, the issues we are trying to solve out are very complicated ones. And the players who are participating in global governance uh, do increase in numbers. So certainly we need uh, more complex mechanisms and institutions, the coordinated efforts to solve out the problems. Why institutions and mechanisms? I think it's uh, very naive to think that there will be one good, real world government. I, I, uh, yesterday I told you that I studied literature in Russia, and one of my favorite poets was a Russian poet, Vladimir Hlebnikov, who used to live in the beginning of the 20th century. He was uh, declaring himself that he was the chairman of the world government. It only can come to the mind of a poet to declare himself uh, the chairman of the global government. But uh, in reality, we think that uh, there is no chance of creating one world government. That's why we need more institutions and mechanisms which will uh, make up the world governance. And the last, the last question, why in future? We think that global governance shouldn't be focused on trying to solve out the problems of today. Because the problems, uh, even if they are solved out, uh, uh, will inevitably create new ones. So the global governance should be able to be flexible enough to solve out the problems of today, at the same time to predict and prepare itself for the future role of solving out problems in future. Now we have to think about who are the players of the global governance. We have been discussing about uh, this issue for many years. Uh, of course, it's quite clear that national governments would be very important players of uh, global governance. At the same time, we do understand that uh, NGOs are becoming more important because they feel that the issues are not solved out. They feel that there are inequalities in today's world. They feel that we waste a lot of time and we lose a lot of opportunities. So we have to engage NGOs into the global governance to make the global governance function successfully. Of course, regional, international organizations are very important. Of course, private sector is also very important. International organizations, the United Nations, World Bank, IMF are very important. And I think that uh, individuals who have uh, developed the uh, uh, good reputation for all they have done in their lives, also very important players. 
So we have to think that global governance is not uh, uh, one body. It's a body consisting of uh, uh, many players. It's a sort of uh, hybrid governance. Why do we need global governance? Because we have problems which are not solved out by one national government or even by a number of uh, governments of one region. Climate change, economic and social development issues, terrorism, conflicts, epidemics are all the problems we have to fight together. I have noticed that uh, all the problems are mainly man-made. The global problems, unfortunately, are the man-made problems. That's why we have to work together to overcome the, and solve all those problems. When we talk about the global governance, uh, we try to define it in a way that uh, uh, to put limits on the activities of the global governance. We try to mainly pay attention to the regulatory form of government. We, ho we think that global government is about regulation. Yes, it is about regulation, but that is only one part of the global governance. We think that, uh, I think that uh, global governance should be also about uh, procedures about how to interpret and administer the rules we have put forward. The global governance should be also about programs, about uh, what we should reflect in the agreements and in the documents we accept together. So global government is uh, not only about regulation, it's about the vision we try to see uh, for the humanity uh, to go into future. Uh, this year we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the uh, Berlin Wall, Wall Fall. It was uh, about bringing down divisions between so-called two worlds at that time. Global governance is also about bringing down divisions. On contrary, it's about bringing together everyone to be a player in uh, building up a better future. We have to think about what would be the index or the criteria uh, that global governance is uh, functioning effectively. I think it should be a performance index or performance criteria based on the quality of life uh, we try to reach uh, together. 20th century was the century of uh, achieving big numbers. We were fascinated by the numbers, by the number of population, by the number of, uh, of uh, of achievements, and the Guinness Book of uh, World Records is a clear reflection of uh, how huma human beings or humanity were trying to achieve big numbers in the 20th century. I think the 21st century should be the century of achieving qualities. Qualities of water we drink, qualities of life we live through. So the performance index should be based on qualitative criteria. So the goal of the global governance is to find the right qualitative criteria to make our life better. That would be the reflections I would try to give when we discuss the global governance. And uh, I am very glad to be here again, as I have said yesterday. And I'm looking forward to very interesting meetings uh, for these two days. Thank you.